We all know that GPT-4 is great at coding. However, over the last few weeks, we have seen a number of open source LLMs focused on coding that were released. One of the earlier and major one was StarCoder, which is an LLM that is specifically trained on source code and natural language text. More recently, the Wizard LM team released Wizard Coder, which is a 15 billion parameter model that is trained on programming codes. A couple of days ago, yet another programming focused model was released, and this one is called Falcoder. The question is, why is this model significant? This model is based on Falcon 7b. A big brother of that model, Falcon 80 billion parameter is currently leading the Open LLM leaderboard. So it's basically one of the best open source model out there. In this video, we're going to closely look at this model, understand how it's trained and what are its capabilities. And then I will show you how you can run this locally on your own machine. I will be showing you the results from the full model, but you can use the QLora version if you do not have enough memory. Okay, so let's first look at what this model is all about and how it's trained. So it's essentially the Falcon 7B model, which is fine-tuned on the Code Alpaca 20K instruction dataset using the QLora method with the PEF library from Hugging Face. Now, first and foremost, in order to use a model, it's very important to look at the actual training data so that you know what inputs the model expects. The good thing is that in this case, we actually have access to the training data. So there are a number of programming languages in, in this training data. On the left-hand side, you have the prompt, and on the right-hand side, you have the corresponding completion or the output. For example, um, let's look at the first one, create a Java class, which sorts the given array of numbers and so you have an array of numbers along with the instructions and here is how it's supposed to solve it. I believe it's a very diverse data set because you see uh, examples from the R language. There are Python examples and then there are even C Sharp, JavaScript, C++ and even SQL. I, while I was looking at the training data, not all of them seems to be coding examples. So for example, if you look at this, why is overflow an issue in computer science? So then uh, here's an, uh, an answer in clear text. So it's not really a code belonging to any language. Here's another example. Describe the difference between a loop and a conditional statement. Now, based on this training data, it seems like the model will not only be able to generate code, but it could also give you responses in plain text because there are a few examples in plain text on which it's trained. This is why it is very important to understand the training data set so that you know the capabilities of the model you are dealing with. Now, one more thing before we actually go and experiment with the model, and that is if you look at these code examples in the training data set, most of them are very small snippets of code or very small functions. So based on the training data set, you cannot expect the model to solve very complex programming tasks, but rather it is going to be working as an assistant, which will provide you with helpful code snippets. We looked at the training data, but now let's look at how you can actually use this model on your local machine. In this specific case, I'm actually using the full model. Uh, so if you do not have enough memory or RAM, you probably want to use the QLora version of the model. Let's walk through the code first. Now here in the first cell, we are installing all the required packages. Next, we are going to be using the transformer library or package from Hugging Face to load the model. So we are simply importing all the required packages and functions. Next, we are defining our model ID. Uh, so this is coming from Hugging Face. Then we are initializing the tokenizer for that specific model, which is the Falcoder 7b. Next, we are loading the model from uh, since it's a pre-trained model. Uh, in this case, I am using a MacBook Pro, so that's why I'm setting this to MPS. Now, if you're running this on an NVIDIA GPU, you should set this to CUDA. So next, there is this generate function that accepts an input in the form of instructions. The max new token, these are the number of tokens that you want to generate. So for a smaller problem, you probably want to set it to a smaller value. I set it to 2098. 
uh, the next parameter is temperature, which essentially controls the creativity or hallucination. So we do not really want any creativity uh, for programming solutions. That's why I'm setting it to a very low value. And these are some of the parameters that control uh, the behavior of our large language model. Now, when it comes to this specific model, since it's based on Falcon 7b, so you have to provide your prompt or instruction or input in a very specific format. So here's the format that it expects the input to be. So you are going to have the instructions, then a triple uh, hash on the next line, solution followed by colon, and after that, it will generate its response. All right, next, we are simply setting uh, some other input parameters. So for example, we run our uh, input or prompt through the tokenizer. Now again, if you're running it on NVIDIA GPU, so just set this to CUDA. And then there are some uh, configurations that we already uh, got as an input to the function, right? Uh, after that, we're going to be uh, running the generate function on the model to generate our output response. And uh, we simply give it all the inputs that we provided to the model, right? And here is how it's going to return the output. So the output, and then we simply split it on the uh, this s special token uh, for the solution that is defined um, in, in the input. Now, I was playing around with uh, the model itself to see how good this is at coding. So this is an example prompt that's actually provided in the repo. And the prompt is design a class for representing a person in Python, right? And actually it came up with a really good solution. So there's a uh, class called person and then within that class uh, define uh, different uh, methods so for example get name get age get gender right and then uh, there are some setter functions so set name uh, set age set gender these are the type of attributes you would expect a person to have here is another one uh, write a function that takes a list of lists and flattens it into a one-dimensional list name your function flatten and it should take a single parameter and return a single list and it uh, actually used list comprehension so here you get a list of lists as an input uh, and the return uh, type is simple a list where everything is concatenated together uh, it's using list comprehension to do it so i think it's pretty neat uh, and it actually also um, gave a couple of examples which is pretty awesome so here's a fun example a string is a palindrome when it is the same when read backwards so if you reverse a string if it's exactly the same uh, then that is supposed to be true so it wrote a function the implementation seems to be correct and then uh, it actually has this uh, example script to run however the output uh, is a bit weird because first it says enter a string right then abc and it says it's not a palindrome and then uh, it is an, has another example, ABC, and this time it says it's a palindrome, right? So it's not really an interpreter uh, where it's actually running the code, but it's simply giving you examples. But the implementation actually looks correct. Now, before this, we just looked at a few fun examples. However, here is an example use case uh, that you probably will be using. So I asked it, write a function in Python that accepts a file as input and uploads it to an S3 bucket, right? Uh, and actually it wrote the uh, code, which seems to be correct. Now, these are the type of example use cases for which you will be using LLMs specifically trained for coding. Since the model was trained on programming related concepts, so I thought it would be a good test to ask it some questions. So the question that I asked was, what is the difference between a class and a method? And the answer it gives is pretty actually accurate. So it says a class is a blueprint for creating objects, while a method is a function that is associated with an object. A class is a collection of variables and functions, while method is a function that is associated with an object. Now it further goes on to say, a class can have multiple methods, while method can only be associated with one class, right? So the explanation it provides is pretty accurate. A couple of things to keep in mind. So I have been testing this model specifically on Python, but uh, the authors have provided examples of SQL and some other languages. During my testing, I found this to be pretty accurate on the examples 
that I ran. Now, a couple of more things to keep in mind while using these LLMs, which are trained specifically for coding. First, they are not really trained to give you a whole program. Rather, they are simply assistants which can help you out with smaller code snippets. So, for example, uh, if you need a very small function, these models can uh, write those for you if you give it proper instructions. But don't expect it to be um, cranking out a whole app application for you. Now, the second point I think which is very important to highlight is that I'm running the full model in this case. Now, as a result, if you look at this simple instruction, uh, it's actually taking around two minutes to complete. Now, based on the hardware you have, your mileage may vary. It's very exciting to see these task-specific open source large language models. And I believe that is the way to go. These smaller open source models cannot compete with something like GPT-4 or even uh, ChatGPT for more generalized knowledge. However, if they are trained on very specific areas and subjects, they might be able to compete. And I think that is the way to go. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. We have a very vibrant community in our Discord server, so I would recommend everybody to come and join us over there and continue the discussion. Consider liking the video if you found it useful and maybe consider subscribing to the channel for updates like this and more in-depth tutorials. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.